Hi, my name is Travis Ridgen. I play professional hockey for a living, and in my lifetime, I've been given the privilege to be able to travel all the way around the world as my job. From planes to trains, Vancouver Island to Halifax to the US and Europe, this video is how hockey's take me around the world. Every stop along the way, it is sponsored by NordVPN, and it all starts right now. At the end of the day, I'm doing what feels right for me and chasing down my dream. All right, so I am born and raised here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada the center of North America. And I've been playing hockey since I was four years old. I just finished my first year of junior B hockey after not being good enough to stick in junior A hockey the year before. And I met a goalie coach by the name of Nolan Kursiba during the season. And I just found that he made a big difference in my game, just communicating over through text during the season. So what did I do? I flew from Winnipeg out to Parksville, BC, where he operated in Vancouver Island. And I skated with him for about 10 days before heading back to Winnipeg. And this was the first ever real hockey trip I ever took, if you're gonna be technical about it. After that, in September, I was back to playing for my junior team here in Lundar, Manitoba, and during the season we would travel all over the province from up north to OCN, Cross Lake, Norway House, St. Malo, and more. If you've ever followed my junior hockey vlog, you know all about that. Now the following summer was a repeat of the previous. In July, I flew Winnipeg to Calgary, Calgary to Nanaimo, where Nolan picked me up to train with him for this time two weeks. And I actually quit my full-time job working at Sobeys as a baker because they would not give me the time off work for this trip, so I quit. And that is a true story. Now fast forward two months and I got an opportunity of a lifetime. The LA Kings were hosting a contest to become their emergency backup goalie. I applied online and somehow for some reason I got selected for the tryout. So I flew down to LA, I made a video on it and this video still to date has pulled in almost 2 million views and is likely the reason that you discovered my videos and it kickstarted the beginning of my soon to be full time income support of YouTube. After the Kings tryout, it was back to Manitoba for my final season of junior hockey where I was traded from here in Lundar, where I played the last two years, about two hours away to Arburg, where I was actually traded for $500 cash. And again, this is a true story. The reason I was traded was, well, I asked for a trade. I was facing about 40 shots a night on average, and I wanted to play college hockey after my final season of junior. And I thought the better stats would help reflect that goal. And although I did end up running a 920 save percentage, that was only half the battle because halfway through the season, I would end up doing recruit trips to Michigan at Adrian College, Baltimore at Stevenson University, and funny enough, in Nanaimo, BC at Vancouver Island University, and to be honest, this was a very easy decision because Canadian college was $3,000 a year and that was all covered by scholarship money and the US schooling was gonna be 30,000 a year plus. Pass, if you ask me. So I ended up committing to play at Vancouver Island University for the following season. Fast forward a few months to July 2018, I ended up flying to Halifax, Nova Scotia on Canada's East Coast because I got invited by this goalie coach right here, Jack Hardigan, who invited me to come to his pro camp to train and get better. It was a one week camp and then it was back to Winnipeg. Fast forward September of 2018, and moving my entire life and my girlfriend at the time from Winnipeg to Nanaimo and I'm gonna be honest, this was a little bit of a challenge. It went from a lot of optimism and potential to being buried as a third string goalie, only practicing one day a week. And I will be honest, this was probably the toughest year of hockey to date that I've had in my lifetime. Fast forward March 2019 after the season was done, I would end up flying to St. Paul, Minnesota for the Let's Play Hockey Expo to help out my friend Rob from Butt Ends at his demo booth. And this is basically a convention where a bunch of hockey companies come around to flex off their latest and greatest products for the upcoming calendar year. After the expo, Rob and I made it our goal to find some outdoor ice to skate on before I went home. And after that, it was back to Vancouver Island to finish out the school year, we're heading back on the two-day drive from Nanaimo across from the ferry to Vancouver, 12 hours to Calgary, and then back across the prairies to Winnipeg. After I got back to Winnipeg, this is where things get interesting. I would end up flying in June of 2019 to Boston to meet up with Rob again to shoot a video with Pat Shea and his brother Neil. After that, Vermont and Rob and I met up with Eric Schwerer and we were trying to make the greatest GoPro hockey video of all time in an attempt to get a GoPro sponsorship. Spoiler alert, that never really worked out. After that, we would road trip in the car to Montreal to skate with one of Rob's friends, Shane Jackson, Buffalo to skate with Brett Bennett, who is a pro goalie coach in the Buffalo area. And finally, touring Rob's Butt Ends headquarters, which by the way, Butt Ends are a grip for your stick that I've been using since 2016 if you're asking and I got to see the whole headquarters and after that it was a trip back to Toronto where I would fly back to Winnipeg. Now by this point in time I'd already told my team at VIU that I wasn't going to be coming back and I was going to be going somewhere else to play for the following season. Problem being is that I had nowhere else lined up at this moment in time. So next up was back to Nanaimo BC to skate and trim with Nolan for two weeks but this was different from the other times because I had signed up for a free agent camp in the SPHL with the Birmingham Bulls in Birmingham, Alabama. And by the way the SPHL is the fourth level of pro in North America. So I headed on an absolute milk run, Winnipeg to Toronto, Toronto to New York, New York to Atlanta, Atlanta to Birmingham. And although I did kind of okay at the camp, I did not get an invite back to main camp, which kind of a stretch, especially after I was a third string Canadian college goalie only a few months before. Shortly after that, I would go back to Winnipeg and believe it or not, I would actually end up scoring a walk-on tryout with the University of Manitoba Bisons. I would skate with them 
all July and all August, and although I really did overachieve at the time, I was released in September of 2019 for my tryout. However, luckily while I was at the Birmingham Free Agent Camp, a player coach by the name of Jay Krupp, this guy right here, he was player coach with the Columbus River Dragons in the FPHL, and he'd sat beside me in the locker room at this camp, and afterwards he'd sign me to an FPHL contract after the camp was done, the Fed, FPHL being the fifth level of pro in North America. But before I went down to Columbus, I flew from Winnipeg to London, Ontario to meet this guy, Steve McKeegan, the former Toronto Maple Leafs goalie coach, to train with him for a week to get me ready for my first official pro training camp and feeling good. And by the way, you and I can both tell that I probably needed a haircut here because my girlfriend was on me for this sick bowl cut I was rocking. After that, it was back to Winnipeg. I would say goodbye to my girlfriend at the time and take everything in my life on this 28-hour drive from Winnipeg to Columbus in October of 2019. And by the way, this is Columbus, Georgia, not Columbus, Ohio. I know, I thought that too. I'm gonna be honest, I also thought at the time that the FPHL was just men's league hockey where guys get paid a few bucks to play, and boy was I wrong. I was in for a very rude awakening when I got there for how good the level actually was. And to make matters worse, although I signed a contract to be the backup for the season, an SPHL goalie ended up dropping down to Columbus only a few days after camp had started. So obviously I was the odd man out and I had no place to play and I was sent back to Winnipeg. But only a month later in November, I would end up finding a spot to play, playing senior hockey for a team called the Nipawa Farmers. It's like a big recycling bin. Uh, <laughs> that upside down bottle of ketchup, so you're okay. This is about two and a half hours north of Winnipeg. So after driving out a few times, and although I didn't do too bad in my first game, I would end up giving up nine goals in my second game. I know, it was, it was a tough night. And although, believe it or not, they did not officially cut me, they did tell me, please stop coming and don't show up anymore. I know, tough crowd, right? Fast forward one month, beginning of December 2019, I had nowhere to play, and even my girlfriend at the time was beyond pissed at me because we had left Nanaimo at VIU in the mountains by the ocean for me to go try out with every team under the sun, get cut by all of them, and now she was stuck back in Winnipeg and I had no team to play for. So I did what any logical thinking person would do at that point in time, and I drove two days from Winnipeg to Calgary across the prairies and then Calgary to Vancouver through the mountains and over to Vancouver Island to try and ask my former college coach from the year before for a second chance. And Steve Paul was having none of it. Uh, my attitude problems and mistakes of the past, I guess, were too much for him and understandably so. He wasn't having any of it. So, yep, you guessed it. It was a very long, lonely two-day drive back to Winnipeg. However, only a few days after I got back home, I actually ended up scoring a recruit trip with Briarcrest College just outside of Regina in Cairnport, Saskatchewan. Now, this was a three-day trip that really didn't result in a commitment or any real answers outside of, hey, come check out the campus and apply for school. So after that, I went back to Winnipeg. And shortly after that, in January 2020, at the dawn of the new year, I went back to London to skate with Steve McKeegan because, you guessed it, I got another recruit trip lined up in Shreveport, Louisiana at East Texas Baptist University. Uh, and this trip was an absolute milk run as well, going Winnipeg to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Atlanta, and Atlanta to Shreveport in early February 2020. Ended up skating with the team at the historic Hirsch Memorial Coliseum, which was also home of the king, Elvis Presley, where the term Elvis has left the building was first uttered. And fun fact, I actually did get an offer here, but with the $30,000 a year price tag for schooling, uh, that was not going to happen. Next up, Montreal. The team at Lefebvre had invited me out to their factory to go and see how they make their gear, and they sized me up for a brand new full custom set on the house, which was really, really, really cool. From then, I flew to West Palm, and by the way, this was still in February 2022, and this this was again to skate with Steve McKeegan while he was out in Florida training a client. Now remember Rob from Bud Ends? He joined me on this trip in Florida and we would road trip afterwards from Florida to Nashville where we absolutely mangled his car, totaled his Audi. We got a rental car and then headed to Minnesota for the Let's Play Hockey Expo in the first couple days of March 2020. This was again to help Rob out at his Bud Ends booth. And before I went home, Rob and I would stop here at the Lumber Yard in Minnesota to skate with Casey. He's a goalie coach as you see on the screen here. Also, can we appreciate this dangle that Rob pulled off me? It was pretty nasty. And after that, it was off to the Minneapolis airport for a flight back to Winnipeg and this was the last normal flight I would ever have in my life because as we all know a week later March 12th 2020 after that I was back in Winnipeg and obviously I couldn't find anywhere to skate because all the rinks were closed so I resorted to try to find any random puddle or pond that was frozen within about a 300 kilometer radius of Winnipeg and luckily 2020 was a very cold winter so March we had no problem skating outdoors with either my dad shooting on me like I was a kid all over again or my goalie coach Guy St. Vincent and to be honest, I think we ended up even skating into mid-April outdoors. Like it was that cold of a winter. And that translated right to my trainer, Brian, where he would have me pushing my own truck through downtown Winnipeg in the snow 
Well, the gyms were closed as well. Now, May of 2020, I drove from Winnipeg to Hamilton, Ontario to skate with this good looking man rocket, Derek Bujan. Now, Buj owns his own facility and I skated with him and now retired former pro, Jamie Phillips, for about a week. I also broke in my brand new Lefebvre 20.1 set of gear that I'd finally got. And also tell me how crisp was that setup? That was a nice looking setup. It was probably my favorite set I've ever owned in my lifetime to date. After that, I would drive back to Winnipeg on a 24 hour drive straight by myself. Yes, it was absolutely nuts. And I was beyond hallucinating towards the end. Back in Winnipeg, I would skate with Guy until about August of 2020 when I would head back to London to skate again with Steve McKeegan one last time for about a week to get me ready before heading over to Europe from the first time in my life to Stockholm, Sweden, about a 20 hour transit. By the way, I will never forget the first time feeling jet lag. This was absolutely horrible, but I would end up settling here in Flemingsburg, about 50 minutes outside of Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. But after about a month, October 2020, the shit hit the fan with import cards, transfer fees, and my roommate Liam Sweeney and I basically had to do a jailbreak to get into the rink to get our gear back. And then we would end up bouncing from the tool shed that we were living in, which by the way, we called the Love Shack because there were no doors and no blinds in the place. Therefore, no love was ever made in this premises. After this, I would camp out in a hotel for about a week before finding a new team on the opposite side of Sweden, which is about a three and a half hour train ride away from Stockholm to Gothenburg, and then about an hour drive to my new town, my new home in Varberg. Now, I only practiced in Barber for about a week before we got shut down for, so after that, I flew back home from Gothenburg to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Calgary, and finally, Calgary to Winnipeg. This was a 21, maybe 22 hour transit time. When I got back home, I wasted absolutely no time. I spent my 14 days in the pen as Daddy Trudeau requested. And then my goalie coach, Guy St. V and I drove 24 hours straight from Winnipeg to Calgary through the mountains and finally to Vancouver to meet and skate with Pasco Volana, this man right here, for five days days after that 24 hour drive straight back to winnipeg by the way how beautiful was this prairie sunrise just a set of medicine hat doesn't get any better prairie sunrises so we get back home december 2020 i got nothing going on so in january first couple of days i took the via rail from winnipeg across the prairies of saskatchewan and alberta into the mountains of jasper alberta now why you ask well i went to go meet a couple friends to skate just outside of the pyramid lakes for a few days and this was easily as you can see on the screen here the most beautiful place I've ever skated on in my lifetime, probably that I ever will skate on. And after three days in Jasper, we headed east to Edmonton. Also again, can we please take a minute to appreciate how awesome and beautiful these mountains are. Holy So we arrived in Edmonton. I got hooked up by the Renaissance Hotel by Marriott in Edmonton and they let us stay there on the house. Awesome place, by the way. But the reason we were in Edmonton was the head coach of Nate, the Alberta College hockey team, was coming out to an outdoor rink to watch me skate and talk about signing for the next season. Early 2021, we're doing recruit trips on outdoor rinks. So we would skate on this beautiful outdoor rink on this crisp Alberta morning. And after getting a very soft, sorry, we're not interested from the coach, uh, we packed up at the Renaissance Hotel. I got dropped back off at the Edmonton train station and headed back 24 hours on the train back to Winnipeg. But after I got back home, I could only stay locked up in my apartment for about four more weeks before I went squirrely and and in February 2021, I drove all the way to Banff to skate at Lake Louise. And yes, the Lake Louise. By the way, this is the Zamboni that was driving down the street in Banff. What a place. Also, you're not supposed to bring nets, but we did get the green light to what I believe is still the only real hockey game played on Lake Louise with nets outside of the almost centennial Chateau Fairmont Lake Louise in history. A little bit of a side note, but if anybody has a hookup at Banff Fairmont Springs or the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise, please let me know because I do not have $700 a night to stay at the hotel, but I really want to stay there because I think it's a really cool place. Anyway, so about three weeks later, I'm back home in Winnipeg and yep, you guessed it. I would end up flying to Vancouver just to get with Pasco Volan again for about 10 days and I would stay at this funky little hotel called the Burrard in downtown. Pretty cool place. And after about 10 days, I didn't fly home, I took the train. And this was the first time that I'd be seeing the full route east to Winnipeg from Vancouver, from the Rocky Mountains outside of Jasper, Alberta, into Edmonton, to Saskatoon. By the way, check out this amazing sunrise. Uh, across the prairies before pulling into Winnipeg about two and a half days later. Shortly after I got back from this trip, I would end up injuring my knee and I would do absolutely nothing exciting for three months. And finally in July, I ended up flying to Montreal to shoot a supplement commercial with Beyond Yourself. They're a Canadian made supplement company that I work with at the time and still do to this day. By the way, this here is Sean and check out the absolutely massive pythons for arms that he has. And this commercial here is for the new Amino IQ Squirt supplement that had just been released at this point in time. After that, I would end up taking the train from downtown Montreal, the hell out of there, heading west to Toronto, where I got picked up just outside of the beautiful Union Station by this man, Derek Bujan. Yes, you remember him from May of 2020. And I would end up staying and living at his facility for about a week, training before I would head back to Winnipeg on, yep, you guessed, the train, 36 hours from here at Toronto Union Station back to Winnipeg, where I would spend three weeks at home before leaving for the season. And I would take the train on August 2nd from Winnipeg to Vancouver, two and a half days in summer. And I gotta say, the mountains were so cool in the winter, but in the summertime, something special. And I would arrive in Vancouver to skate with Pasco Volana again for two and a half weeks before heading to the Vancouver airport on August 23rd. By the way, this year is Coach Brad, Pasco's assistant, where I would fly from Vancouver 
10 hours over to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Gothenburg, Sweden, where I would get picked up and driven back to Varberg, the same team that I finished with before we got shut down. And I would end up playing here until December when I would fly Gothenburg to Oslo, Oslo to Hogesund, Norway, where I would be on a pro trial with the Hogesund Seagulls in the Norway 2 Pro League. Now, as you could probably imagine, this lasted all of five days because we got shut down for the you know what, and the team would end up folding shortly after that later on in the season. So I ended up flying back to Sweden to finish up the season with my team in Varberg. Uh, keep in mind that our longest road trip during this year was about four hours, and we would play in places like Udavala, Lusishil, Kvegården, and Kunsbaka. By the way, to all the Swedish people that have complained about my accent over the last two years, I've been working on it. Hope you're not disappointed. After the season, I would spend some time traveling around Sweden to watch some SHL Pro Hockey. I went back to Stockholm to watch Ugordon take on Lulia. Uh, by the way, what an absolute dirty shootout move to win this one for Ugordon. Uh, I would go six hours away to Feriostad to watch a game, and that's the green team here, by the way. And Finally, four hours away to Oskarsham with my buddy Wes after we got invited to watch a playoff game between my buddy Tim Yule and Oskarsham against Rogla. And about a month later, in April of 2022, I would say goodbye to Sweden. Well, for the foreseeable future and I flew back to Canada from Gothenburg, Sweden to Amsterdam, Amsterdam nine hours back to Calgary. Now I was supposed to fly to Winnipeg after the Calgary flight, but a massive snowstorm stopped that from happening. And I would spend two days in Calgary with this man right here. This is my uncle Ed, my dad's brother. And two days later, I would fly back to Winnipeg and come home for the first time in almost nine months to see my family. As you can imagine, I spent a good amount of time in Winnipeg after that. And then two months later in June, I would fly to Quebec City. After I landed in Quebec, I would get driven down to Chicoutimi where I was going to be picking up my brand new Lefebvre 20.2 gear that was custom made for me and I would use it for the first time. This was about a two day trip. And I would go back home through Toronto to Winnipeg. Now, August of 2022, things pick up again. I fly back to Toronto and to my surprise, my bags did not get lost somehow at Pearson. I would arrive and get picked up by Derek Bujan and like the summer before, he would let me live at his training facility for a week while I train and work out. After that, I would fly across the country from Toronto Pearson to, you guessed it, back to Vancouver, where I would spend the next month training with Pascal Vlana to prepare for the start of the season. Now, I did not go back to Europe for the 22-23 season. Remember the Fed and the Columbus River Dragons from 2019? Well, I signed in the same league with the brand new expansion Motor City Rockers for this year. And after about four weeks with Pasco, about a month, I flew back to Winnipeg for two days to pick up all my stuff and move my life two days later from Winnipeg to Toronto, Toronto to Detroit. Now, here at the Big Boy Arena, this is our home where we played in Detroit. But as far as travel goes, we would travel 12 hours to Watertown, New York, where I would ultimately pick up my first North American Pro win. Also, this was a huge change from the four hour bus trips and the same night trips in Sweden to the absolute grind of North American pro hockey. Next up, Binghamton, New York, home of the Binghamton Black Bears, and they got, by the way, easily the nicest arena in the league. And the final road trip I was a part of was Harrington, Delaware, home of the Delaware Thunder, before I was finally shut down for the season for season-ending hip surgery. So in December, I flew back to Winnipeg from Detroit to get some pre-surgery work done. A week later, I would fly to Vancouver to see my now girlfriend. I spent two weeks there before taking the train back to Winnipeg because all the airports shut down in Canada because of the countrywide snowstorm. And as you can imagine, it's kind of difficult to cancel a train. So two and a half days later, I would arrive home back in Winnipeg. Fast forward two weeks, I got my hip surgery. And one week after my surgery, I took the train and sleeper class, this time from Winnipeg back to Vancouver, two and a half days later, where I'm currently settled and will be for the full-time future until I leave for the upcoming fall in the 2023-24 season. And if there is one thing that I've learned in all of it is that it is impossible without today's video sponsor, NordVPN. I have used NordVPN for almost three years now, and it is a huge help to keep me protected whenever I use public Wi-Fi when traveling. Reason being is that Nord keeps cyber threats at bay with their cyber threat protection. They protect my IP address so I can't be tracked and my information encrypted. They also help me stream all of my favorite sporting events easily whenever I'm at the airports, and you can get this too. Nord is currently having their birthday sales special, so every purchase of a two-year protection plan will receive an additional subscription for free when you tap that first link in the video description at nordvpn.com slash trial for orders, and that'll get you the best most up-to-date pricing that Nord has to offer. It is risk-free, by the way, with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. I also want to say thank you very much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and keep me protected on all of these trips the last three years. Now to conclude, as I said in the beginning of this video, I am beyond grateful and blessed to play hockey for a living. To have this YouTube channel help supplement money that I make from hockey so that this is the only thing I have to do for a job has absolutely changed my life. I can travel wherever, whenever I want, and I get to share this experience with you every step of the way. If there is somewhere that you would love to see me travel to or play one day, please let me know in the comments section below. I would love to talk to you about it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to hear more stories or follow my pro hockey journey in the next season, hit the subscribe button. I want to say thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.